everyone to our Bible study series and this is our first topic and it's called Heart Matters. Heart Matters is about a connection with God that you can feel. Many things are going to change in your life when you can experience the love of God. Your faith is going to explode because faith works by love. The more you experience the love of God, the more you're going to trust Him. And it will effortlessly translate into loving others. God is a hard God. Nothing is real until it is happening from our heart to His heart. Your heart is the seat of your affections and your belief about God and yourself. It's the seed of your identity. When your identity changes, then our behavior follows. Value, worth, and love, they are one and the same thing. What is love? Love is not about sexual desire that we have for someone. Love is not about being excited about meeting them. All of that can sometimes be about selfishness and about meeting my needs. Love is this. Love is when you value someone and consider them precious. You hold them in high regard. That's how we truly need to relate to someone. It's about making them feel precious and feel valuable. And love flows from the heart, since love is from the heart. Remember this, that in our relationship with God, it's not about a formula, it's not about a position, it is our connecting our heart to the heart of our Creator God. I want to talk about love. Love is always a hard thing. The concept of what love is sometimes misconstrued. Many people don't understand love. Love is not just about you making me happy. You making me feel good. If you are not making me happy or feeling good, then you're not walking in love. Do you know that a lot of things that Jesus said to people didn't make them feel good until they put it into practice. Then that change comes then they feel good. That's what God wants to set us free today from. The Bible speaks about this perfect love and love being perfected or love being completed. It's a will of God for love to be completed. What is completed love? Completed love is a love given and love received. The person who receives it is able to respond to the giver and then is able to pass it on to others. The receiving of that love is going to change your identity. It changes the way you look at people, the way you look at the world. We can only give what we have. If you don't have a sense of value about yourself, then we cannot consistently cause other people to feel valuable and loved. Let me... Read to you Mark chapter 12, verse 29 to 31. Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this, You shall love your neighbor, as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than these. Well, the Bible tells us to love, which means to value, to hold in high regard, to consider precious. Our Lord, our God. Then it also tells you to love, to value, to uh, highly regard and to consider precious others, which is your neighbor. He said we are to do this the same way that you love others, you have to also love yourself. That means that you need to value yourself. You need to hold yourself in high regard and to consider yourself precious. When I experience the value that God places on me, I'm going to feel good about myself. Even though I'm still working on my issues and my struggles that I may be facing. You know, 
Let me put it this very clearly. If your conscience is alive and it's not hardened, when you fail, you're going to have some negative emotions. If you don't have any negative emotions over sin, then you have a hardened heart. It's not because you have perfected in love or because you're convinced of your righteousness. Righteousness does not have fellowship with darkness. So when you have given yourself to darkness or to things that are not loving, it's going to cause some negative emotions. It will only destroy you or destroy your self-worth if it becomes a lifestyle and ultimately it will destroy your confidence. It helps my conscience when I live a godly life. But ultimately, my self-worth comes from the value that God has put on me. Loving God and loving other people doesn't happen in two different ways. No. You know what? If His love is in me, is completed, then the way I relate to God is the same way I relate to others. That's right. So let's not grieve the Holy Spirit by the way we treat one another. Now, we need to understand that we are created in the likeness and in the image of God. God is a social and emotional being. He has emotions, but he's not driven by emotions. He can feel emotions but it's not controlled by emotions, you see. God is not a machine. He's a person that's capable of emotions. How do I know that? Because you can see from the Bible how he expresses his emotions. If God is important to me, then the relationship that I have with him is also important to me. It's important for me how I treat God and how I make God Feel. Some people are saying, oh, you're making me feel bad now, Pastor, <laughs> because I'm not treating God right. Some people don't like that because they want a technical relationship with God, but not an intimate relationship with God. <laughs> you know, how I'm going to have a relationship with God is what I want to share and what I want to teach, how it looks like and how it's going to benefit all of us. So the main thing sometimes we are struggling in our Christian walk with God is, this, is because we're not having an intimate relationship with God. There is this interesting aspect of our relationship with God which is uh, the more we are able to receive the love from God, the more we become capable of giving and receiving love from others. Let's look at the words that God uses to describe the connection that we have with God. It's really interesting to see that almost everything revolves around the idea of relationships. We are called the children of God. We are the family of God. We are heirs of God. We are the bride of Christ. So one of the most common models that God uses in talking about our relationship with Him is marriage. Sadly, in our society today, marriage is distorted and people are giving up hope on marriage. Marriage is probably one of the clearest picture of our connection with God. Just as it takes the same things to have an incredible marriage, it takes the same emotional aspects and same commitment to in our Incredible relationship with God. One more verse from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. It says here, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. God wants us to be like him. Jesus shows us exactly what God was like by walking in love in healing people, in helping people, in blessing people, in uh, giving people hope, and in setting people free from every demon oppression. If we are called Jesus' disciples, then we got to imitate God and express ourselves as children of our Heavenly Father here. 
This is the way your heavenly father is in character and nature. And this is the way Jesus modeled it for us. And this is the way that we're going to walk in love. The place that we should walk in love more than in any other place is in our relationship, our closest relationships. So look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25, 30 to 32 here. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her. Gave himself for her, not dominating her, not controlling her. Then goes on to say, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man should leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, for I speak concerning Christ and the church. In other words, all these about marriage, even though it applies to marriage, it really is about the mystery of our relationship with God as the bride of Christ. One of the major differences between what happens in marriage and what happens in our relationship with God is this, that God is the only being in our relationship that's able to love perfectly. We never have to deal with God being in a bad mood or having a bad attitude or irritated with us. But that doesn't mean that we can't hurt Him and it can't affect the heart of God but he's always going to love us with his perfect love. So, we got to realize that our desire, our willingness, and our capacity to love in our relationship actually reflects more about our spirituality. The greatest measurement of our spiritual maturity is in our capacity and willingness to experience and express God's love. So if you are not experiencing and expressing God's love, you can pray all you want, you can quote the scriptures, you can work on miracles, but without love, the Bible say, we are nothing. It's meaningless. The Bible tells us how God eagerly watches over us, how God seeks to protect us, doing all he can in promoting this life, love-giving relationship. He wants us to have this incredible experience and feeling of love from Him so that we can never feel lack or feel alone. Because He always promised to be with us. He's always faithful and true. Amen. Thank you very much. I hope you are blessed by this teaching. And if you are watching this on YouTube, we want you to go click on the like button at the bottom and share because people need to know this message. The more people like and share, the more people are going to see this message and all more people are going to be helped. So thank you for helping us to touch the lives of people all around the world. God bless you. See you next time.